Good morning, good morning, good morning. Ooh, a little on the dark side today here in my study. Um, even with all my studio lighting, but it's gray outside, right? And when the sun is streaming through the window that's over here, then everything's nice and bright. But when it's a gray and dull day like today, um, it doesn't, doesn't light up the back as much. You've noticed when I've recorded in the evenings, it's really dark behind me. You know, and if I turn the light over here to try and lighten up the bookcase as it shines on the side, I said, studio lighting's not a simple thing. And I certainly do not have quality studio lights. What I've got is lights that I've bought, other than, other than my one color sensitive light that I bought from B&H Video in California when I ordered my camera and my microphone. I've got two LED desk lamps that I, I bought from that fine home retailer Menards uh, that were, I think, I think they were 15 and $19 a piece and they're just kind of here. So good morning. Glad you're here with us on this Tuesday morning. I'm dressed kind of casual. Uh, I don't have, well, I, I do have Greek today, but I'm not going. I have um, physical therapy um, shortly after we're done here. And then I've got my rehab doctor after that. I think things are improving though. I mean, my hand's still numb and stuff, but I'm seeing some little improvements here and there. So I think it's getting better. My chiropractor's telling me mid mid to late May, we should be, she should be good. And I'll see what the rehab doctor says today. Just keeping you guys updated, because I know that some, if not all of you care, and many of you have been, have expressed that you're praying for me, and I appreciate that. Let's see how we're doing here. Who's who's joining us? Brenda Fifield. Good morning. If Red's anywhere around or you see him today by any chance, say hi to him for me. I miss that old codger. Michael, good morning. You're inside the stadium, but there's no game today, huh? Only one more. Yeah, that's what I thought. Because I, I, I believe next week is the season openers um, many places, so... Yeah, it's going to be time for baseball again, which just drags on all summer long. I did enjoy going to the Tigers game. I've been to one Brewers game years and years ago. Alexander was a an itty-bitty, I think he might have been between two and three. Um, no? You don't think he was even two yet? No. I know that most of the game he and I spent walking around. Because he couldn't sit in the chair, of course. Zan and or Jean Luc and Bonnie got to watch the game. Uh, we had we had dugout seats, which was kind of cool. And then uh, and then we went to two Tigers games, uh, courtesy of the Michigan State Police. No, I wasn't arrested and taken there. That's not what I mean. Um, I had one of one of my members of my congregation had access to uh, to tickets that were donated by them, and we received them for. Um, for the youth and things like that so anyway michael good morning jerry good morning to you verna good morning look at that you're right one after the other this time <clears throat> renee good morning gray and chilly yep that's what it is here today too wet yeah yeah we, the the snow that came down on monday morning um is still here it, it melted somewhat but it just my, my driveway coming across the church driveway and into the Parsonage driveway is just a mud pit. It's gravel, but you who have gravel driveways understand when I say gravel mud pit. All the low spots are bad. In fact, I we picked some stuff up from Bonnie's mother in the back of my truck yesterday from her apartment, and I backed it into the to the garage to, not into the garage, but backed it to the garage to, to unload it, and it was sliding all over in the slop. John and Janet, good morning down in Florida also, if I remember right. Um, oh, yeah, and Mike's telling me, yes, it is It is uh, opening time. Oh, no, you're saying yeah to Renee. Uh, Connie and Robin, good morning. Praise, good evening to you. Jill and John, good morning. And there's Bonnie piping in, giving you the weather here, 31 foggy, cloudy. Yeah, but we're headed into the 40s, and, and it's going to get gradually warmer and then I'll be able to do some repair work on my truck if my hand will cooperate. So good morning. Um, that's about all I know. Let's go ahead and get down to the brass tacks, the business at hand. Daily prayer for individuals and families. Uh, maybe I do this for therapy for myself too. I just get to talk to you guys. I don't know. Um, page 295 in the LSB. 
uh, Lutheran service book, Daily Prayer for Individuals and Families Morning Order. We'll go ahead and begin there. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. In the morning, O Lord, you hear my voice. In the morning, I prepare a sacrifice for you and watch. My mouth is filled with your praise and with your glory all the day. O Lord, open my lips, and my mouth will declare your praise. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. And our psalm today, psalm, make sure I'm on the right one here. Yeah, I'm Psalm 44, verses 1 through 4. O oh God, we have heard with our ears, our fathers have told us, what deeds you performed in their days, in the days of old. You with your own hand drove out the nations, but them you planted. You afflicted the peoples, but them you set free. For not by their own sword did they win the land, nor did their own arm save them, but your right hand and your, your arm, and the light of your face, for you delighted in them. You are my, God, my king, O God, ordained salvation for Jacob. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. You know, time and time again in the scriptures, we see God's hand at work. So many times I wonder if the people who are there at the time see God's hand at work. I, I Because it, it, when you're, I, this has been on my mind here for the last few months. I don't know why. But we, we don't always recognize when God is at work. Uh, when, when he is working his will uh, in this world by the means that are uh, his people. But, you know, like, we're doing the book of Judges in my Bible study at, at uh, Faith and Harshaw. And we just, we're just finishing up, in fact, maybe we fin no, we're finishing up Gideon, uh, the Judge Gideon. And uh, he, he, um, you know, he had 32 thousand men that were supposed to, that, that he gathered um, to go after the Midianites. And, the, and, and then God said, don't keep any of them that don't want to be here. So uh, he said, if you're not comfortable with this, go home, uh, go back to your camps, go home, go away. Uh, and the 32,000 became 10,000. And then God sent the 10,000 down to the, to the shores of, um, uh, of, of the river there. And that 10,000 was cut down to 300 men. And with 300 men, he took, uh, he took the Midianites. And you know God's hand is in that because the Midianites were like locusts on the plain. Um, their numbers were over 100, 135,000 or something like that, according to the scriptures. Um, and, and the 300 men took them. Now, the ways were, were contrived and devious without going into the details, but... And do they see God's work, God's hand in the work that's going on? Do we see it today when God is, is working according to his good and gracious will for those who, who trust in him um, and for the benefit of those who are in, um, in this, this world? I don't know. I mean, certainly in, in, in the readings we've had with Jacob and, and Joseph, uh, the family of Israel, we can see his hand working. Let's go ahead and continue, though. Let's get to Jacob here. We're gonna we're gonna look at at Jacob's death and burial, and <clears throat> God's good purposes, which is, um, I think, kind of the end of, um, yeah, the end of, uh, the end of of, ex essentially the end of Genesis, um. And we're gonna tomorrow we would start with the beginning of Exodus, but I'm gonna I'm gonna jump a little further into Exodus to move us a little ahead. But let's let's look here. Genesis chapter 49, verses 29 through 50. Or tw chapter 49, verses 29 through 50, verse 7. Chapter 50, verse 7, and then chapter 50, verses 14 and 26. So a little 
a little jumping here. Genesis 49, 29 and following. Then, uh, then he commanded them and said to them, I am to be gathered to my people. Bury me with my fathers in the cave that is in the field of Ephron, the Hittite, in the cave that is in the field of Machpelah, to the east of Mamre, in the land of Canaan, which Abraham bought with a field from Ephron, the Hittite, to possess as a burying place. There they buried Abraham and Sarah, his wife. There they buried Isaac and Rebekah, his wife. And there I buried Leah. The field and the cave that is in it were bought from the Hittites. When Jacob finished commanding his sons, he drew up his feet into the bed and breathed his last and was gathered to his people. Then Joseph fell on his father's face and wept over him and kissed him. And Joseph commanded his servants, the physicians, to embalm his father. So the physicians embalmed Israel. Forty days were required for it, for that is how many are required for embalming. And the Egyptians wept for him seventy days. And when the days of weeping for him were past, Joseph spoke to the household of Pharaoh, saying, if now I have found favor in your eyes, please speak in the ears of Pharaoh, saying, My father made me swear, saying, I am about to die in my tomb that I hewed out for myself in the land of Canaan. There shall you bury me. Now, therefore, let me please go up and bury my father, and then I will return. And Pharaoh answered, Go up and bury your father, as he made you swear. So Joseph went up to bury his father. With him went up all the servants of Pharaoh, the elders of his household, and all the elders in the land of Egypt. After he had buried his father, Joseph returned to Egypt with his brothers and all who had gone up with him to bury his father. When Joseph's brothers saw that their father was dead, they said, it may be that Joseph will hate us and pay us back for all the evil that we did to him. So they sent a message to Joseph saying, your father gave this command before he died. Say to Joseph, please forgive the transgression of your brothers and their sin because they did evil to you. And now please forgive the transgression of the servants of the God of your father. Joseph wept when they spoke to him. His brothers also came and fell down before him and said, Behold, we are your servants. But Joseph said to them, Do not fear, for am I in the place of God? As for you, you meant evil against me, but God meant it for good, to bring it about that many people should be kept alive as they are today. So do not fear. I will provide for you and your little ones. Thus he comforted them and spoke kindly to them. So Joseph remained in Egypt, he and his father's house. Joseph, Joseph lived 110 years. And Joseph saw Ephraim's children of the third generation. The children also of Mekir, the son of Manasseh, were counted as Joseph's own. And Joseph said to his brothers, I am about to die, but God will visit you and bring you up out of this land to the land he swore to Abraham, to Isaac, and to Jacob. Then Joseph made the sons of Israel swear, saying, God will surely visit you, and you shall carry up my bones from here. So Joseph died being 110 years old. They embalmed him, and he was put in a coffin in Egypt. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. And so ends, so ends the narrative of Joseph, but... Um, his father made sure that he would be buried with his fathers, Abraham and Isaac. And Joseph asked to be buried at the end of his life with his fathers, Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. Um, well, they, they keep him in Egypt until the return. We'll get to that. <laughs> Bonnie's getting ahead of me. Um, 
that's the love of a son for a father. I mean, I think, I think, oh, hey, good morning, Glenn. I think everybody, every, every, every child, even a wicked child, quite often desires to be faithful to their parent at their end, to, to honor their last wishes and do what it is they would have them do. And that's a good thing. There's nothing wrong with that. Um, so we should do it. It's the fourth commandment, honor your father and your mother. Um, and so Joseph asked Pharaoh for permission to leave his post for a time and to take his father to bury him. And Pharaoh is more than willing. The Pharaoh that they are under uh, during the time of Joseph is a very gracious Pharaoh uh, to God's people. And God's people are, are Israel, God's people, Jacob and Jacob's offspring, the households of his offspring, are, are living in living living as uh, with a preferred status um, in in the kingdom of of Egypt um, they are um, they're not they're not given ranks and titles such as Joseph has they're not barons or dukes or anything like that but they live with preferred status and and Pharaoh is very careful to take care of them that's going to change that's going to change and we're going to skip over the change uh, tomorrow um, but what I, what I want to focus on here, because tomorrow I can mention the change and what, what changes, but what I want to look at here, um, real briefly is what happens between Joseph and his brothers after Jacob's death. Um, the brothers are afraid of Joseph. Now, Joseph has already told them they are forgiven. We saw that with, with when they, the second time they came back uh, to buy the wheat and they were brought to his house to eat and he revealed himself to them. Um, he told them that he'd forgiven them um, and that he understood the, the big picture, right? The, the important things that were going on. Um, but when Jacob's dead, you know, uh, they're, 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 they're fallen sinful natures, right? Um, think, well, now that dad's dead, he was the only reason that that Joseph was treating us well. He, they didn't, he didn't want to dishonor dad. Uh, so let's, let's plot. Let's go tell him that before dad died, he said that Joseph had to forgive us. And so they, so they go to him and um, uh, they say, father gave this command before he died. Um, forgive the transgression of your brothers and their sin. Well, he probably did. It's not un unlikely that he, he said that, but he probably said it to Joseph, <laughs> not to his brothers. Um, and maybe he did say it in front of them, and um, he's just they're just asking him to remember. But you know, Joseph, realizing that his brothers are still afraid of him uh, for retribution, weeps. He's, he's saddened by it, right? I think even our Lord, when we come before him in confession of our sins, asking him not to be wrathful, but to forgive, I think he weeps too. I, not in a human sense, right? Our God is not a human being. He, his, his responses, although we, the best way we can understand them is in a human way, um, I think he's sorrowful when we fear him, um, even after he's forgiven us. Um, but, but certainly here, Joseph forgives them. And here's, here's the important part. And, and I think this is, you know, as I, as I began, I was talking about seeing God's hand in the world and, and his working and what he's doing. Joseph sees it. He can look back on what happened and, and where they've arrived. And he can, he can see that the Lord was working. And not always uh, in the most gracious of ways, right? Um, I mean, he sold into slavery, thrown into prison. But God was working to preserve his people. And so Joseph is able to look at his brothers and say, do not fear. I'm not in the place of God. I'm not here to judge you. Um, you meant to do evil against me. We know that. And, and, and you have repented of it. You, you wish you hadn't done it. You suffered for it. Um, and, and you repented for it. Um, and I've forgiven you. But what you meant for evil, God used for good. God meant it for good to bring it bring it about that many people should be kept alive as they are today, right? 
we don't always see God's hand in things. You know, and sometimes we sit back and we say, well, where are you, Lord? Why aren't you doing something about this or that? And the truth is, in the background, he is. Sometimes that suffering is brought upon us so that we would turn away from ourselves and back to him. Right? That's, that's an ultimately the purpose of suffering in the world is to, to bring us closer to God, to, to look for the mercy of God in Christ Jesus, uh, to seek his forgiveness. Um, and sometimes it, it sometimes it's goes until you're at the point where you're on your knees begging for mercy uh, before before you realize that. And sometimes it comes more quickly. Sometimes it never comes. But God is always at work. He's at work right now. All the all the things that are going on in our world today, He's at work. He's He's in control of these things. He's allowing the suffering where it's necessary for those who who uh, are away from Him uh, to suffer. Uh, but He's also sending aid in small ways uh, to those who well who trust in Him. Um, he never thoroughly alleviates our suffering until we draw our last breath, until we, like, like Jacob and like Joseph, come to an end. Um, but with suffering, he always, he always gives a way out, and the way is through Christ. It's always through Christ. We don't always see it. We don't always see it. But we pray and we trust and remain faithful to him who's in control of all things, knowing that whatever it is he's working, on the last day he brings it to its completion. And for those who are in faith to him, that completion winds up to be life eternal in his heavenly kingdom. The life that began at the baptismal font that's lived in word and sacrament and faith each day of our lives, repenting of our sins and desiring to do better. And then finally, on our last day, to be joined with him in a resurrection like his. That's the peace that surpasses understanding. That like Jacob's, or like Joseph's brothers, God doesn't hate us. He hates no one. But he does desire our perfection and our life lived according to his commands and statutes. It's Jesus who says, if you love me, he will keep my commands, his word. It's in his word that we find life. Amen. Let's look to our prayer for the day. Oop, too many pages. Uh, let us, well, somewhere here. Ah, there. Let us pray. Lord Jesus Christ, your body was anointed with holy oil by the woman of the house of Simon, the leper to prepare it for burial. May your church continue to take care of your body as she feeds your people the holy food of your body and blood for the forgiveness of sins. For you live and reign with the Father and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. We continue with the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. On the third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. And we are bold to pray, as our Lord taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Prayers for ourselves and others on this Tuesday morning. Lord Jesus Christ, only Son of the Father, 
and perfect righteousness, you always do the will of your Father. He desires no one to be lost, but that every sinner believe in your redeeming death on the cross. As the very Lamb of God, you took away my sins and carried them to Golgotha to pay the debt that I owed. You graciously gave up your life and took it up again, rising Easter morning. In order to do your Father's will, you sent your apostles out with the command to baptize and teach the world to the whole the word to the whole world. And you send your Holy Spirit into the hearts of sinners like me to create faith by the hearing of the good news. By your mighty work, I am saved rather than lost. Enlighten my heart with your word and spirit to recognize the snares of the devil that are in my path this day. Bind me to you and protect me from anyone and anything that desires to separate me from your kindness. Rescue me from my sin and the weakness of my flesh. Give me the will and desire to love you more. Rebuke, correct, and train my heart to reject the false gods that seek to usurp your dominion over my life. As surely as your will is done in heaven, let it be done in my life here and now. In your most holy name I pray. Amen. And for others this day, those who have asked for our prayers, we ask, Lord, that you would continue to give them strength to their caregivers, that you would grant wisdom to nursing staff, compassion, and to those who, who are healing and on the mend, Again, your continued strength as, long, as well as comfort and confidence in your holy will. We ask this especially this day for Peter, Karen, Olive, James, Pat, Lois, Don, Brian, and all those who call upon your most holy name. Grant them comfort and peace, assurance at the end. This we ask in the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Almighty God, merciful Father, who created and completed all things, on this day when the work of our calling begins anew, we implore you to create its beginning, direct its continuance, and bless its end, that all our doings may be preserved from sin, our life sanctified, and our work this day be well-pleasing to you, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. I thank you, my Heavenly Father, through Jesus Christ, your dear Son, that you have kept me this night from all harm and danger. I pray that you would keep me this day also from sin and every evil, that all my doings in life may please you. For into your hands I commend myself, my body and soul and all things. Let your holy angel be with me, that the evil foe may have no power over me. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. Well, my friends, Time to go throw a little chow in my face and head to a couple of appointments. God's peace be with you, and we will see you ooh, tomorrow's Wednesday. Will I see you here? Do I have to record? Nope. Tomorrow I will see you right here for our daily devotions again on Wednesday morning. God's peace be with you.